Welcome back. Welcome back, everyone, to... Wait, did I... Microphone? Oh, I see. Welcome back, everyone, to the 2v2 0k Coercion September Tournament. I never keep the order consistent anytime. I remain your host, Dominic or Shadow Fury, and we have the grand finals between Pyrostasis and Rar against 400 and Wesley. Now, 400 and Wesley did fight Pyrostasis and Rar in the first match I casted today, and they won. It was on Trojan Hills. They just outpowered their opponents. So it was just... Uh, basically an economy fight. They both went aggressive on economy, and 400 and Wesley just ended up getting ahead. They took good fights, they made more of an economic push, ended up winning the map. Now we're on to Archer's Valley, which is a similar map in terms of economy, but more so. Actually, much, much more so. This is a very macro map. It's also very open, and you can basically walk wherever you want. So we'll see a lot of forces going along everywhere. Not vehicles, mind you, but bots can basically go everywhere. It's effectively a flat map to them, Though, of course, it does have ways of blocking shots, which is nice. But I do expect we'll see probably, like, Spider's Tanks or Spider's Air or something like that. Or maybe Cloaky Air. Just because the way the map is set up, it's a large enough map that you can do an air start and get away with it. And it's a hilly enough map that bots can get around, but it's also got enough flat sections that you can build tanks if you want to. Like, you aren't stuck just building bots of any kind. So, you know, it might actually be fine if they go for tanks. I'd be curious to see if they do. Not sure when they're actually going to get in here, though. Why is it, why is it normal quit? Why did everyone quit? What the heck's going on here? Oh, I see. Hang on. Well, uh, technical difficulties. That was weird. Okay, hopefully that works. Alright, well, sorry about that. Slight delays. Not sure what's going on here. Are they going to be able to finish this? Is the server just, just going to kill? Just going to die and we're all going to not be able to play? Okay, let's go. Oh. Hmm. All right, well, I'm not sure exactly what's happening here, because normally we just start and then we just go. Okay. Let's try this again. Hopefully it works. We don't deal with any issues. We're into the Grand Finals, as mentioned. We're on Arches Valley, which, as mentioned, is a very macro-y map. I... I guess no one's actually had a chance to really plan out stuff then. Huh. But it looks like people are in. Yes, people are in. Good. Or maybe. Where's Pyrostasis? Pyrostasis is in. All right, good. We're in. We're in. Everything's synced up. We're no longer dealing with desync issues. We can start getting this game going. Getting them factories built. Getting them bots built up and then killed mercilessly over and over and over again in a futile attempt to find some kind of peace through war. Yeah. It's kind of the millennial experience. Anyway, the... Looks like Pyrostasis and Rar, not sure they're gonna go... F okay, they're trying to... Well, okay, Wesley point out, hey, let's go for the Center Expansion. Yeah, you probably should. Actually, this map only has the one. I thought it had more. Why do I think that more of those? I thought I had four of them across the map, but I think I'm, I'm thinking of a different map, apparently. Nope, just the one. Okay, so RAR on shields, potentially? Could work. I mean, I don't know if they're going to go for Thug Push. Kind of funny if they did, but I don't know. Maybe. And as for... Western Front, I don't know. Are they, what are you doing?
Okay, so it looks like we're having Spider Shield from Pyrostasis and Rar. And from 400 and Wesley, I don't know. I'm guessing they're on Mumble. Or on Discord. Actually, I can check if they're on Discord. They're not on Discord. They are probably also they are probably on Mumble. Would not surprise me. Anyway, this looks like it's gonna be getting going pretty quick. 400 on Cloaky. Where is Wesley? No, seriously, where is Wesley? Looks like they're going back line. Are they going to go for air? Are we going to see Cloaky Gunship or something? That'd be kind of neat. Where? Nope, Cloaky Shields. Cloaky Shields! Okay. Are we doing, like, Glaive into... Into Snitch? Or Glaive Felon? Doing the same kind of push we did last time? I'm curious. Wait, why is Warren starting? Okay, I don't know sure what Warren is planning on doing here. Ah, okay, that makes sense. Backline Cloaky. And now we can go. Hooray! The game has begun! So yeah, shields coming in. Early builds for them. Early glaives for 400. Pyrostase is going for early fleas. And builders coming up early on for... Well, actually, no, standard build-up. You know, convict into a couple bandits. Kind of makes sense in 2v2. But I like what Pyrostasis is doing. Because of course I do, because it's fleas and it means they scout everywhere. Which means they know exactly what's going on. And on a map like this, you can scout on a bunch of these hills that normally don't have much on. Like, hills without any metal extractors. You can just put fleas on them and your opponents probably won't spot them. Now, this flea is dead. Maybe. It, the fact that it's there is known. So it's probably going to die. It can't really run away. It can try, but it's... Yeah, it's done. In a valiant effort, but yeah, if they're on hills that don't have metal extractors, it's less likely that their opponents are going to go on those hills. Especially this one right here. This is a really good hill. And it got blocked. I mean, the fleas couldn't get into it. But if they could have gotten into it, they'd have been able to see everything inside 400's base. And this hill as well. These two are really good hills for fleas to go onto. Because they're probably not going to get checked. And they're hills. So, like, you're... Okay, actually, it's not true. The bots will go over them. But still, they are hills that bots can go around. I think... Are these hills the bots can't? No. There is nothing bots cannot path on here. Still, though, the the thing is, fleas on those hills would be harder to notice. Like, people aren't going to be building there, so they they might get spotted by chance, but buildings aren't going to be constructed up there, and units might go through there, but probably aren't going to. On the other hand, this flea is able to see that this metal extractor is or is not built. Also, in terms of economy, the north side... Building up a fair bit faster, not sure if more aggressively. Like, they have a decent amount of defenses being built up. South side, about the same. But, I, wait. Are we seriously... In case of bracket reset, I... I don't know what I'd want to see. I really have no idea what I'd want to see in the case of a bracket reset. You know what? No. I'm going to I'm going to self promote. I'm going to self freaking promote. Iced coffee, the only map I've ever made. Throw that out there. It's not a very good map, but I made it. And we're going to go in joke maps. We're going to bring in my joke map. Actually, okay, so back to the game though. Bands coming here, the fleas, nothing stopping them. This comic's done. And from there, they should be able to tear apart these metal extractors. Especially the okay, the comic goes down. That is Oh, the bandit! Seriously, just barely saving the convicts. Okay, so this entire eastern side can continue to be expanded. West lane 400 are in a really good spot right now. The glaive is going to be able to do some counter harassment here. I have to be careful because of all the bandits they're fighting against. But still, that counter harassment means that they're not going to be. Sorry, that's their bandits. My bad. But still, there's other bandits on the map. But the counter harassment and the fact that they're able to survive with that convict means they're able to build up during the harassment attempt. They don't have to get in another convict spend half a minute setting it up all in the same spot that it was before and losing metal extractors. So that was a really good little bit of tactics from Wesley. However, I'm still not confident because their forces in the back aren't really that big. As a distraction, yes, it's working. It's working really well. But I don't know if it's going to work super well. I mean, the thing is, Pyrostasis and Rar know that this base is going to have been built to. They know that there's a convict that just barely survived that's over there. And this 
the Redback is going to have no problems coming in and ripping it all to shreds, especially if it has the support of the Bandits. And now with RAR basically taking the center expansion, that is going to help a lot for North. Granted, it more puts them at parity because Southside has been expanding more aggressively. And again, as mentioned before, 400 and Wesley expand until the point to start hitting a front line and then build defenses. So if they get attacked really quickly, that actually means they don't have the stack defenses up, which could do the trick. I mean, I'm not really sure, though, but I could see it potentially working just because, well, at this point, there's nothing stopping apart from the, the Ronin. Now, if the Ronins do get killed, then yes, that... Oh, sorry, the Ronins don't... If the Ronin kill their opponents, then yeah, there's not really a contest here. It's, it's fine. They used units. The units were worked well. But I don't think it's going to happen just for sheer numbers and unit types used. I think the Ronin have a slight disadvantage here, and that the front line isn't really going to be established, at least not in a way that 400 and Wesley will like. Now, at the same time, there's Pyrostasis coming in here. And remember, if Pyrostasis and Rar win, there is a bracket reset. There's a reason people are talking about bracket reset, is that if Pyrostasis and Rar take this, then there's a bracket reset, and we have another BO3. But I don't know whether that's going to happen. At this point, the south side does have the economic advantage, but they're having a really hard time holding on to the stuff that they have. The Redback's coming in the here, 400's commander, able to stop them reasonably well, but at great loss. However, Ronin are pretty much the counter to spiders, so as long as they're used well enough to not die, they should be able to stay in the match, they should be able to turn that into a win. And now with Ronin Rogue, Spider's effectively useless. At least if there's a couple of glaives to get rid of the fleas. But yeah, Spider is pretty much just boiled down to fleas, a few glaives being built up to deal with the fleas, that'll be enough to stop everything. Or bandits, that works too. Either way, get rid of the fleas, and that's the only threat gotten rid of. Now at this point, yeah, 400 and Wesley just need to turn that into a con turn the economy into production, turn the production into... No, they already got that. North side is the one that is accessing. But yeah, turn the production into a force that's able to tear apart everything that's been built up by Pyrostasis and RAR. Because this feels like a turning point. These rogues can get in here and start ripping apart everything RAR has built up. Like, don't worry about the stinger, just push in. Kill everything. You've got rogues, it's fine they can get rid of that, then there's not a whole lot that Pyrostasis and Rar have going for them. At this point, they still have an economic disadvantage, even though they have that center expansion. They haven't set up a lot of overdrive for it, and if they do, that's going to be a different story. But they haven't done it yet. Of course, the other problem is that Rar is positioning themselves to take out the eastern side entirely, and Wesley has nothing to defend. All their, all their forces are over in the center, and aren't really in position. They might be able to help some bandits, able to provide a bit of support, but it's not much. And anyway, here's here's the fleas, though, and that was a weird transition. Sorry about that. Here's the fleas, however, on the other side, and that is going to be a bit of a problem. The glaives are in position to help stop them, but still a few ronin are dying despite all that. And the fleas are able to completely outpace everything, getting rid of a few metal extractors, probably getting rid of some of the stuff in the back line, too, because no static defenses have been built up, so the fleas have a lot of room to play with. But it may not matter. Honestly, I don't know if it's going to matter, because that force that was sent over to the eastern side, it did some damage, but ultimately didn't actually win anything. The bandits are able to just pick off the rogues one by one. And while fleas are coming in, there's just counter glaives being built up. And those glaives, well, there's enough of them, the fleas really won't be able to do much afterwards. And yeah, the redbacks are there, but there's already still ronin available. Uh, not as many as there once were. Oh, there's only two. Okay, never mind. There aren't any ronin available. The fleas did their job. But there are rogues available, and that's where the problem lies. Not to mention the south side continuing to get stronger and stronger economy, and as a result, larger and larger armies, and that's making it much, much harder for these fleas to do anything, especially as the glaives have caught up with them, and are they even get, they're not even going to get rid of a single wind generator. Sorry, they did get rid of one. Okay, they got rid of a single wind generator. That was it. All they managed to get rid of was one wind generator, and even that's not enough. Although at this point, the fact that there are no ronin here means the redbacks able to hold off, getting close to the lotus, actually allowing the fleas to get in, but still, that's a lot of fleas that force them to get in there. Still, though, where are the bandits? The bandits? <sighs> I'm hearing bandits. It's like, okay, that's an option. True. But I'm not just going to work. The mass flea actually is a great idea. Like, I kind of wish that this, that the bandits were over here to help out. Because the glaives are useful. But the ronin have to get rid of the redbacks. And the glaives can't really get rid of the fleas in the process. 
And at the same time, so much pressure is being pushed on by the north side. The south side cannot deal with all these fleas. They don't have the forces. This is the thing about not having static defenses. They had a single Stardust. The fleas would be dead. Or even a picket or two. It would be a lot harder to work with the, the red backs for them to get in and then work from there. So while I still think that the south side does have a stronger military and definitely has a stronger economy, it's hard to say how long that'll last just for all the flea pressure. I mean, the glaives, like I said, they're coming in, they're dealing with it, but the fleas are picking off units here and there. They're picking off Ronan, they're picking off conjurers. It's becoming a lot harder for the south side to maintain their position on the front of the map. And that's the problem. If they can't hold the front, then ultimately, Rar and Pyrostasis will take this map because they will start expanding. They will get all this metal and turn that into overdrive and turn that into units. Because at this point, in terms of overall army value, it's like... It's still in favor of the south side for now. But... It's... The north side's starting to catch up. Especially as their attrition has been a lot more efficient. Especially, especially with stuff going on in the back lines like this. That's actually pretty scary. Although these rogues are on a suicide mission, the bandits will be able to stop the bandit attacking and then be able to get rid of the Ronin. Sorry, the Ronin, the rogues. While at the same time, Glaive's going on the back line with nothing stopping them. There is a red back or two. There's a couple lotuses. The lotus is going to go down. The red back, bit of a threat. Honestly, the Glaives could kill it, but why bother? Just go around the back lines, tear apart everything else. And there's the rogues going down on the eastern side of the map. The northern side of the map, Glaive's able to go to the fusion plant before it's even constructed. Oh, they got rid of a couple of the caretakers. That'd be perfect. They can't do much else, though. The red back doing a fine job defending where it is, and these lotuses would be too much of a problem to get through for the glaives. But still, they're doing a smart thing here, going around the side, not going to the main base, going to get rid of what expansions they can from behind, just undermine everything. Get rid of lotuses, get rid of metal extractors, break apart where it's weak. At the same time, the front line is being held. There are Aryans coming in, there's ravens and possibly phoenixes, no thunderbirds though. But ravens and phoenixes to try to help out get rid of the rogues, but it may not be enough. The armies coming in over here on the eastern side of the map are still probably going to push through Rar's forces. Not much is defending. And as the Glaives go around the back as well, that's even more important. The Glaives are tearing apart all the defenses before anything gets to them. Just, that's what raiding is for. Late game, this is what late game raiding is all about. Just get where you can, find the openings, and start cutting through them. And that way the rest of your frontline forces can push in because of that. Like it allows the frontline forces to go in with impunity because there's basically no defenses left. Or defenses are left, you're aware of, you know exactly how to deal with them. And unless they're things like Stardust or Stinger, like Stardusts would stop the Glaives. But Lotus, Lotuses are being used more because there's a bunch of thugs and other heavy forces. And I guess Bardus didn't want to spend a lot of money on defenses. But they don't expect a lot of Glaives coming through. If they had Stardust, that would have been different. But then they also would have a much harder time dealing with the Rogues. Because Stardusts get countered by Rogues. So it's really, it really makes sense why Rar did not build Stardusts. But it also means the Glaives have free reign. So I'm not sure if that was a strategy that Farhan and Wesley had of just go for Rogue and Ronin, or go for Rogue and Ronin to make sure that their opponents build defenses that don't counter Glaives, but it worked. Certainly been very effective. Now it's just a matter of whether or not Southside can actually deal with the gunship air mix, and I don't know if they can. They don't have a lot of anti-air right now, and that is going to split their forces. Like between anti-air and anti-ground, that is. They're going to have. I mean, they have a larger army, yes, by army value. It's slightly larger, like 3,000 metal, but it's a matter of how much of that can become anti-air without losing what makes that army work, and I don't know. I mean, it really comes down to how much these phoenixes and ravens can destroy their opponent's force. That's the key thing to me. If the force, if the south side's army gets destroyed because of the air quickly enough, then it may be too much throwing the anti-air, but right now it looks like it's not a huge deal. Some some gremlins are being built, but that's it. No major focus. Actually, never mind. Going for air themselves, get some ravens up. That'll help with the gunships. Also, just in general, help with the game. Actually, probably gonna use the ravens to take care of this metal extractor. Just take it away from the north team. I mean, with overdrive, it's seven metal per second. That'd be a massive blow. That'd be like losing four metal extractors all at once. And at the same time, the main focus for anti-air is, is static anti-air. Get the chainsaw. Get rid of the locust that way. Not a terrible idea. I mean, it's a bit risky because it does require that your opponents are near it, but at the same time, that's actually kind of fine. Because, I mean, if you think about it, especially with the chainsaw and the sheer range it has, that works. Like, it makes that entire section of the map unavailable to the locusts. So that's secured. And other than that, that center expansion is destroyed, then 
there's not much that can stop anything, and now the slings are just doing a fine enough job with that. I mean, the phoenix is able to stop them somewhat, but the chainsaw making the phoenix regret ever having tried, and the slings able to still get what they needed. And the raven's coming in, not able to do much, because again, that chainsaw, that's... That's what I mean. I kind of agree with you, Sustag AA here, so that they don't, so that South Team doesn't lose their army. They don't end up, they don't end up losing all their anti-ground forces in order to build anti-air forces. And at the same time, their anti-air forces are essentially securing an entire area of the map quite cost-effectively, and pretty, pretty completely. Like that western side of the map is the, like the eastern side of the map has a problem right now because it doesn't have the anti-air, but the, the western side of the map doesn't. Although again, Ravens get rid of the locusts. So it still works out all right. Would have liked to see a razor here, though. Like one or two razors just to help deal with any stray small air units that come through. But yeah, that's fine. At this point, the fleet's getting rid of the rogues with no support from bandits or anything. Yeah, this is over. At least for the eastern side. The, the eastern side has been secured by 400 and Wesley. The western side being gradually torn apart. Rar's commander getting ripped apart by a knight. Not even being dueled by another commander, just a knight coming in here, just stunning it out, along with some, actually not much else, but still, that's all, there ha all they have there, and that is going to be basically it, Parar's commander, at least I think it will, hard to really say, but it doesn't even matter, the economy is so strong in terms of the south side, the north side has a bit of reclaim to work with, but with that, that they're kind of screwed, so I just... Yeah, without their commander, actually, they're even more screwed now. So it's just a matter of one final push. I mean, Pyrotasis and Mar, they have a decent army to actually hold off a big push. But I'm not sure how well that's going to happen. Like, I really have my doubts about how well, how likely that is to happen. With all the glaives coming in the side, with no defenses able to deal with them. And at the same time, just strong forces over in the west. Like, Anarch the commander from 400, able to stop most everything coming in. The Hermits will have a difficult time getting in. But it looks like it's still enough for the Glaives to go on the backside. Nothing is really there to stop them. And it's just a slow push over to the center. The Hermits are really the main problem right now. I'm not sure how much the Hermits are actually going to matter. I mean, with all the Glaives coming in here, they can just stop the Hermits if they ever met up with them. And again, because the Hermits are on the front line, nothing's in the back line. Sardis are just now being built. The Glaives don't have anything stopping them. There's a couple couple of bandits, but that's not going to be enough. The only major threat that those Glaives have is going to be breaking something that has a large enough explosion radius that it kills them in the process. Like the air pad. The air pad would actually be a bad thing to go after. But otherwise, that's about it. The, the Glaives can get rid of the Hermits without issue. There's, there's the Glaives going to get rid of the Hermits, which they shall do without issue. The rogues as well, there's... I and mean, they're there, but there's not much that'll actually help them with it, and... That's just a matter of whether or not they can get gotten rid of anytime soon, which... No matter, is the north side gonna, re gonna resign before any of that happens? Because if the north side... If the north side resigns, then it doesn't matter if they get destroyed, but I think, yeah, that's... I think we're gonna be moving on to game two with Warner and Wesley taking the first win, and Rar and Pyrostasis having the choice of map. That was an interesting game, though, because Rar and Pyrostasis has had a really strong start. They were able to hold the map. They got the center expansion quite quickly, and they were able to get in a lot of damage along the sides. But the problem, I think a large part was that they didn't get rid of that convict here. That was a huge turning point. The fact that the convict existed allowed them to hold the base, meant that there was a lot more time for 400 and Wesley to build up defenses as the forces came in on that side. That was one big blow. But after that, more just became the fact that Really, 400 and Wesley had built up so many skirmishers and conditioned their opponents so much to expect skirmishers that when the Glaives came in, nothing was in place to stop them. And that led to all the economy being destroyed, and ultimately that le led to the game being won for 400 and Wesley. Well, it's very likely. Pyrostasis as, like, one-shot Hermit setup that might work. Hermit Redback as a combination will deal with the Glaives, but I'm honestly not sure it'll matter. Like, I'm actually kind of surprised that Rara is even going in for this. Like, this... No, Rara is... Rara is still pretty confident they have something they could do. Maybe drop down a, a snitch or two, get rid of the ground forces, that might do the trick? I don't know. 
I have my doubts. But, I mean, the Hermits are closing in. There's not a whole lot of stuff to deal with them. I mean, the Redbacks would get destroyed by the Ronin, but the Glaives wouldn't be able to last. Ah, then the Redbacks aren't going to be able to get rid of the Stardust. So, yeah, the Glaives, Glaive, Stardust, Misk should be able to get rid of the Hermits without too many issues. Even as the Stardust goes down, it's not enough to stop the Glaive, Ronin, Mix from getting rid of the Hermits, and that should be it. So, yeah, with that, that's probably game. That's the last stand, and that's... Not a very effective last stand, honestly, as far as Pyrostasis is concerned. But it was a valiant effort. I cannot fault them for that. So with that, I... Yeah, I don't see any of the real force coming in. North side has no economy. They have 4,000 metal on army. South side has, ten, has somewhere between 5 and 10 times North side's economy. I'm honestly surprised this game hasn't ended yet. Like, we're getting... They're excessing because, as far as I can tell... They don't have p things getting off the platforms quickly enough to actually build things in time. Like they're building so much stuff just to spend the money, because they might as well, but things aren't moving up the platform fast enough to make it work. Just attack! Okay, they are just attacking. Okay, cool. They're fight moving, which is honestly unnecessary, but yeah, th this is just a straightforward attack. This is over. The sheer... How, how big is the army now? 18k to 2k. Yeah. Again, a nearly tenfold difference between the army sizes. This is over. There is no coming back from this for Pirate Citizen Noir. They have one more map. If they win the next map, then they might have another chance. But I don't know. Oftentimes, the way these tournaments tend to go is that the first map takes a little while. And then, granted, the second map last time did take half an hour. But oftentimes, the first map takes a while, and the second map is just like a quick shot one way or the other and then over. But, I don't know. That might be... That might... That's a pattern I've noticed, but it's not always the case. At any rate, South takes it, and it's up to RAR and Pyrostasis to figure out what map they're thinking they're going to win on. Because at this point, they don't have that. And as for some of the comments on the stream, okay, so, people saying North needed to have a radar, I... I don't know. North had a lot of vision. They kind of knew what was going on. The problem what they didn't have was the static defenses. They didn't have specifically Stardusts, which was a, that's what I was mentioning before, is that because of all the rogues and Ronin, building Stardusts would have been pointless. Since building Stardusts means you're ceding a bunch of territory to rogues and Ronin. Since they can just come in and kill the Stardusts without worrying about it. They can do it for free. So the Glaives can't go in and harass, but at that point you're spending money on defenses that aren't doing you any good against the forces that you're fighting against. And that's something I think might have been a conditioning play from Wesley and Wesley 400 because their opponents wouldn't go for Stardusts. And then now Glaives can go in the back because they figure, well, our opponents aren't going to defend against Glaives, so let's just go mask Glaives. And it worked. So yeah, that's really what it came down to. If they hadn't gone for if they'd gone for Stardusts, then probably yeah, the Glaives wouldn't have done much good. But at the same time, the Ronin and Rogues would have had more to push in because Stardusts are way more expensive than the Lotus. Like a Lotus, I think it's like half-ish the cost of a Stardust. So it would have been it would have been about 1, 1,500 metal less of army as a result. <laughs> okay, where's the map choice? Okay, we're still wearing the map choice. But yeah, I mean it, it was a the use of Lotuses was probably not the best idea. It's, Stardust, one or two wouldn't have been, wouldn't have broken the bank. But there weren't any. So, yeah. Are we going on here? Okay, they're clearly thinking very hard. <clears throat> there is a lot of hard thinking going on here. I don't know which what will be.
All right, so looks like Pyro's going to be the one picking the map, and Pyro's Tasis, they've been playing a lot of spidery stuff. I almost expect they'd go for something kind of hilly that would benefit spiders. Ice coffee! Yay! Ice coffee it is! Small map, short map. Actually, it's not a short map necessarily. There's a lot of defensible spots in that map, but still, that'd be cool. Oh. Okay, Rar doesn't want ice coffee. All right, we're getting a random map, so who knows what we're going to get. This could be anything. Rolling the dice. Hide and see. Oh, we're going to be here all day. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> well, I don't think it's actually going to last that long. Hide and seek is one of those maps that either it works for a long match or it doesn't. And if you don't know how to play hide and seek, it's a short match. <sighs> I mean, I do like this map. It's just that it can... It's one of those maps that, like, I have no idea how long this match is going to be. But I think that 400 and Wesley have a bit of an advantage. Although, I don't know. Because this map is one of those maps you kind of have to play and learn. And since Field Thoughts and Flipstep aren't here, and I haven't really been playing the game in a while, I don't know if anyone's that practiced on this map. But yeah, this isn't one of those maps I really could easily make a generalized rule to say which one it's going to be. Like, who's going to win? Ah. But I think, still, like, there's the fact that it is a macro-oriented map, and the fact is that Wesley... Actually, no, both teams, both teams are good at macro. The fact is both teams are good at macro. Like, that's, that's all there is to it. Both teams know how to build an economy. Both teams know how to build up, get an army going. So it could be fine, but... Again, I don't know. I think we might just see the team, like, might just see Pyrostasis and Mar just go for a, a super aggressive, risky strategy. And it might work, too, because this is kind of a smaller map, but still. I could see them just going, you know what? Screw it. We're just going to try to get through this map quickly. If we win, great. If we don't, fine. We don't have to play in hide and seek. Damn it. I don't know. Yeah. What map could it be? Maybe. It's hide and seek, because nobody likes hide and seek. I actually kind of like hide and seek. I enjoy playing at hide and seek, but I'm one of the few weirdos who do. Like, it's like me, and like I said, Field Thoughts play on it a lot, but most people do not like this map. And I can't say I'm surprised, because it's a very weird map with a lot of different terrain. You have to kind of use spiders for a lot of it, too. And there's so many paths around. Your main base is quite vulnerable, really. Yeah, our, okay, yep. Gunship jump bots. That is that is a total screw it, we're just gonna try to win fast or die strategy. That's what it is. That's all it is. 400 going for spiders, which, yep, makes sense. Cloaky is Wesley's choice. Again, that makes sense too. This map only works for bots, to be quite honest. But spiders especially, because these cliffs here, these cliffs are spider path only. If you don't have spiders... You do not do well on those cliffs. Simple as that. Now, gunships aren't a bad idea. Jump bots can work. It's a little risky because jumping on the cliffs... Like mostly, you'd be going around the cliffs. Gunships, however, kind of get around that because they're not trying to deal with things directly. But at the same time, RAR is going for an early wasp. They're clearly trying to just build up quickly. So it could might not be a total cheese. But hey, the fleas can come in here... Early spiders, fleas come in. Not a whole lot's going to stop them, actually, at this point. And more importantly, not a whole lot's going to stop them from getting information. Like, yeah, the pyros will kill them. But they can still find out, okay, this is what pyrostasis and Ra are up to. Because pyros, pyros are going to be doing what they can to scout them. But they're not going to be doing enough to stop them from getting the info. Actually, at this point, pyro has no pyros in the main base. So yeah, flea gets free info. In fact, flea gets all the free info, and I... Don't... Okay, it's known. Its existence is known. Pyrostasis would have seen it, but still. It's fine. You know what makes sense for Pyrostasis? Going Jump Bot Spider and running a Venom Pyro combo. That's like the only thing that really fits. But if you did that, that'd be like the most Pyrostasis game for Pyrostasis. At any rate, Redback coming in here should be able to get rid of the Pyro without too much of a problem, and yeah, pyro, there's, is he gonna jump in? 
Yep, it's gonna jump in. Okay, that I don't ever agree with, but it did it. And it died. And that's why I don't agree with it, because if you jump in, you can't jump out. It's not something you really learned playing Zero K, it's actually something I learned the hard way playing Battle, right? The other game that I cast. Mind you, I haven't done much recently, but still. Is that if you jump in, you can't escape. You're done. Your escapes are spent. And that's the same thing with any jump bots. If they don't, if they walk in, they can jump out. If they jump in, they have to walk out and they're probably dead. If you need to have them retreat, it's probably too late. Now, as for economy, Northeast is doing a fine job with this little wasp here. Going over the Northeast was a really good idea. Because at the same time, the Southwest hasn't really been building up their economy in the efficient spots. They've gotten one of the efficient metal extractors, but they haven't gotten the other two right in their main base. I'd really like to see a country be built up to actually do that, because right now I'm not quite sure what the strategy is for 400 and Wesley. Like, yeah, okay, they got rid of a pyro, sure, and they can throw some redbacks in and do some damage, but they can't win with them. The moderators are out. There's nothing left. Other than building up an economy and going for the mid-game, there isn't anything else they can do. RAR actually had a really good idea going to the northeast rapidly. Because that's a huge amount of me that's a huge amount of metal that they just took without having to worry about it. Now their opponents are way behind. Also, Wesley's stuck because of a pathfinding thing. What the heck? Oh no. That's that sucks. I don't know what happened there, but Wesley's commanders got stuck. And yeah, this these glaives aren't gonna do any good. Harpy's one shot glaive, so that's not gonna help at all. Wesley's commander is actually in a really tight spot, too, so I'm not sure how well this is going to even work. Pyrostasis... I mean, their commander... They're going to be running up against the Redbacks, but that should be fine. The, the mo moderators will stop them. Yeah, the Redback's dead. So yeah, this sucks. Wesley, unfortunately, not really going to the southwest and taking it, while Rar has taken the northeast. So we're seeing a similar setup to the last game, where... Well, Rar and Pyrostasis are building up a reasonably strong economy, and 400 and Wesley kind of playing catch-up. Although 400 and Wesley aren't that far behind, but still, it's the gap is growing. Oh, nice! This Glaive is actually in a great spot. There's nothing really stopping it. The Harpy might be able to pull back, but that, that means it's not attacking the front lines, and that gives a lot more room for 400 to, you know, not die. And the Wasp goes down for free? Yes, for free! Along with the Along with that metal extractor, the south, the northeast, however, they built a Stardust. Rar and Pyrostasis learned their lesson. There's a Stardust in the back there. Glaze cannot kill it. But it may not matter, ultimately. I'm not sure. It might... It might, but that's still, like, almost... That's still 8 metal per second. That's basically just theirs for the rest of the game. So it's still good stuff. Of course, the one thing is, like I said, Southwest is behind economically. They have not taken many of the big, valuable expansions yet. Now, finally, Wesley is over in the Southwest, taking this medal. But it's been all game that Northeast has had the Northeast side. Has had the medal over here. Has had this roughly 8 medal per second. And that's not great for Southwest. Especially as the Harpies going around and harassing. The only saving grace for Southwest is that the Harpies are harassing metal extractors that don't build much. Or don't give much. But that's not much to work from. That's, that's not really much of a blessing. It's more just that all this money was wasted on metal extractors that didn't really pay it back, and now it, they're dead. That's not a great... That's not a great look. Not a great story. It's not really what you want to have happen. Well, on the other hand, these fleas doing a fine job getting to the placeholder moderator combo. Oh, the power's going to be able to... Oh, no. It was, yeah, it's going to be able to stop it. I mean, more fleas coming in, but the pyro doesn't have any problems getting rid of fleas. Like, at all. Although, that being said, Reaver coming in here. Oh, Pyrostasis commander. Unfortunately, it wasn't two Reavers. If it had been, Pyrostasis would have lost their commander, but only one Reaver, not enough. Two Reavers do kill a commander, though, pretty much guaranteed. Unless they have support, but yeah. Two Reavers against an unsupported commander, the commander dies. So at this point, I just want to see Wesley build up, like, more along the metal extractors that matter. I don't think they know. Like, my view, the view you're seeing right now, where it's showing plus numbers, that is not the default view. The default view just shows little bars of metal. I don't know how Wesley has it set up, but the default view just shows little bars. And on most maps, that's fine, because most maps, it's plus two per metal extractor. But hide-and-seek, it's not. Hide-and-seek, there's so many 1.3s that you kind of got to avoid them until you get the 2.7s. RAR 
took that into account. And Wesley has not. Wesley just kind of expanded where they can, but hasn't really taken into account the fact that some of those expansions are twice as valuable as others. And that, to me, is the big thing that's giving Northeast an advantage here, is the fact that the expansions being taken are the ones that matter. The ones that give the majority of the metal. Like, it's that much more valuable. Also, I kind of wish these fleas would fight move. Yeah, pro tip, when you're using fleas, fight move them. Don't just move them. Because if you fight move them, they'll stop right at their max range, which is outside the range of the, the metal extractor death explosion. Otherwise, they'll kill one metal extractor and die. Or two or three, and then die. Because the metal extractor death explosions will kill them. But yeah, using straight move, they'll just end up wherever you tell them to go, and that might be too close. At any rate, Southwest seems to have managed to build themselves back up reasonably well, having okay defenses, but honestly, it's more as they haven't been really pressured very heavily. At this point, Pyrostase is setting up a bunch of jacks, and that's not something there are any answers to. At this point, Westlane 400 have really spread themselves thin, but haven't really done a whole lot to be efficient with the map and with their unit choices, and honestly, I don't think they have the army value either. And, nah, it's even. Army value is even. But a uh, placeholder moderator is a very strong combo. The harpies are stopping any glaze from doing anything. The fleas are not going to do any real work. The tarantulas are good. The tarantula gremlin is great. It's getting rid of all these harpies, at least on the south side. But nothing is going to stop the placeholder moderator combo. At all. Like, fleas, if there was no pyro there, sure. But there's a pyro there, so no. And, yeah, tarantula again. Good to have. But yeah, the question is, what is it that 400 Wesley can do to push forward from here? Because right now, yeah, they got fleas. They have damage they can deal. They are scouting quite well. I like that. And what do they have for radar? Well, not much, but it's hard to get radar on this map. Their opponents are a bit more complete, but again, it's it's hard to get radar on this map, so I don't really blame them. The hills make it almost impossible. Oh, these fleas are so close. They can kill the metal extractor right now. And that's one of the big ones, too. Oh, it doesn't matter. Either way, though, the placeholder has gone down. Pyro died, but it doesn't even really matter. The placeholder... Wait, did the placeholder placeholder itself? Yes, it did. But yeah, the Harpy is putting a stop to that regardless. Still, though, there's the fleas coming into the metal extractor, taking that one out. They take those metal extractors out. That's... Well, that's still northeast of the massive economic advantage because they have the northwest corner and the northeast corner with overdrive. And those are very valuable metal extractors. Really, there's not a whole lot of time left for Southwest to actually do anything meaningful before they just simply run out of resources relative to their opponents. And the fleas are not something meaningful here. Honestly, I don't know why we aren't... If we're going to see raiders, throw glaives out there. Like, why just this? Why just fleas? That's not going to do a whole lot of good. Actually, okay, I guess against some of them it will, but mostly no. On the other hand, the Jacks coming in here allow for a lot of reclaim to be taken from what Northeast had built. So maybe there's an opportunity, but honestly, I don't know what Southwest has that they can even do. They just, they still don't even have this 2.7 up here. They don't have most of this, honestly. Most of the map is not theirs. Most of the economy is not theirs. Pyrostasis as commander is actually in a risky spot that could lead to their death. Will lead to their death. So that's one saving grace, I suppose, is that they will be able to get rid of an opponent's commander and stop the expansions along this side. But that's a small comfort. I mean, they'll lose all the sites in the process. So, oh no, most of them survive. Oh, okay, that was good. Walked away in ton then. So again, never mind, the sites actually will be able to stop that. The advance has been stopped in the south side of the map. But the question is, there's no riots. What do you do against the pyros? There's not really anything in the way of skirmishes. How do you get rid of the defenses? The sites can kind of help, but they're not. They're going to lose against the pyros. Why are they up against the pyros? That's suicide! The the size cannot stay cloaked near the pyros. Just having the fire nearby is going to stop them from being useful. I don't understand why Scythe in this situation. I mean, yeah, get into the commander, sure, that's fine. But afterwards, no, I don't understand at all. I guess pyros, it's not going to be that effective. Well, okay, it's somewhat effective. It did manage to work, but still, the spider factory's down. And honestly, I don't know if I'd recommend going for spiders again. I'd almost recommend going for gunships themselves, getting a bunch of tridents, using that to secure the air. But even then, I'm not sure that'll help. Wesley's commander goes down. Foreign's commander has already gone down. This game, this game is, it's Southwest's 
Done. Nor Power Stasis and Roar will be able to move on to map three. Like, that really good macro play, and the fact that Wesley did not go for the valuable expansions early on, that was the key thing. Like, seriously, for anyone playing the game, F10, settings, actually, put simple settings so you know what it is. F10, settings, interface, always show mexes. Oh, shit, they don't have the one that lets you... Crap. You have to go to non-simple settings. But then, you get that, and then, actually, not just search for it. Metal spots. Oops. Metal spots, settings, interface, map, metal spots, show income as icon, uncheck that, so it's very obvious, this is what it says icon, it's kind of obvious that one's bigger than the other, but not by much, this, by numbers, so you know what the numbers are, do that, so that you don't get, hard, have a hard time on a map like hide and seek, where the, the value of the metal extractors varies so wildly. But now, we're gonna be moving on to map three. Like, this is going to be possibly a reset, actually. So, map 3 will be up to 400 and Wesley. Not sure what they're going to pick. I kind of feel like something like Red Comet. A more normal macro map. Feels like that's what they go for. Honestly, I don't know, but it has worked for them thus far. Or maybe rematch Trojan Hills. I don't know. That'd be kind of neat. But either way, we are moving on to map 3. And the possibility of a bracket reset. So, yeah. This has been actually a pretty interesting, kind of faster tournament than I expected for 2v2. But, it'll be interesting what happens. That was a random map, by the way. That was... <sighs> Hide and Seek was... Random map, like, for our Empire States just went, you know what, do it randomly, see what happens, and, well, that's what happened. That's what happened. And I'm repeating myself, because I'm learning other things to say. I'm almost out of words. So let's make this quick. All right, so if we have, <clears throat> I still think something macro. -y. I wouldn't mind seeing Trojan Hills rematch. That'd be neat. I think Trojan Hills rematch would be a little bit much potentially, but yeah, I think it'd be neat. But I'm kind of curious what's going to happen with the other stuff because, like, if they go for Trojan Hills, I guess that's an option. But then it's like, what happens if they go for, I don't know, something else? Like, if they go for Fairyland. That's going to be long. Or, oh! No, because I go for something quick. I think that's going to be 400 and Wesley losing. Like, I don't really want the zombies, because that apparently is going to happen if we have a bracket reset. They'll have a zombie mod on, which I think means that units that die come back after a brief while. I don't know if they have to be gibbed to stop them or not. Like, if they're... I th think they just come back even if the wreckage has been damaged, unless it's been properly reclaimed. Okay, add in Sonya. Oh! Yeah, okay. That makes sense. That's kind of in between on macro. Like, there's there's the base in the northeast that like, there's the base in the northeast that will provide or northeast southwest. That's usually the starting point. And there's economy over here, kind of. Sorry. Starting point is here. I'm thinking the Living Lands. Starting point here and here. There is possibility a starting point in the Northeast and Southwest as well. Possibly one player will go to the main center, one player will go to the Northeast, Southwest. So we could see something like... Like some kind of air mix or amph. Or hover, maybe. Wesley was threatening hover on Red Comet. It could work. I could see that. But I'm not sure. I mean, I honestly kind of have my doubts, because it's still... What the heck? Why am I not... Why is my camera broken? What the... 
why am I camera not CUFs? What the heck's going on with my keyboard? What the hell? Okay, that was What the heck? Wait. Okay, there we go. One of the modifier keys is being held down. Probably... Probably alt. Yeah, that's what's happening. My alt key was being held down. Okay, I hate when Windows does that sometimes, but it happens sometimes. So yeah, like I was saying, with... This expansion here can be used as well, possibly as an air staging point. And oftentimes, you do see in 2v2 and 3v3, there will be someone over in the northeast. I think 2v2 is less common, but 3v3 is fairly common. I mean, it's even in the recommended start positions. Hmm. But yeah, I still think West, Wesleyan 400 kind of have a bit of an advantage here. There's, this might devolve into Pork Wars in the center of the map. It can do that. Kind of depends on how much people try to flank or use air. Let's see, shields. So Pyrosis is going for the spiders. Shields is Wesley's choice. Actually, also fair warning. I've I'm actually going to have to get going after this game. So if we go to bracket reset, that'll have to be handled in a recap stream, I'm afraid. But I don't know what'll happen. Spider gunship didn't did it work last time? I mean, it worked last time with on hide and seek. Yes, I'm just thinking that might be an option. And before I'm going for spiders as well, so we have spider shield from Wrestling 400. A solid combination that we've seen thus far. It has worked. And spider plus gunship for RAR and pyrostasis from the looks of it. Oh, thanks, John. Okay, so apparently with zombies, if they get destroyed to the point that it's no longer a recognizable corpse, just triangles in the ground, then they don't resurrect. So, okay, so it's Doom Nightmare difficulty rules. Got it. The original Doom. I think Doom 2016 Nightmare doesn't involve resurrecting enemies. Anyway, Pyrosis is being very forward with their factory, and honestly, I'm not sure if this is worth the risk. We already have fleas coming up here, because this is kind of the obvious point to go from, but no, not seeing it! Just barely not seeing the factory, and the red Redback will be up in time to stop anything from damaging it. Okay, it has been spotted. Oh, whoops. My bad. Downside of using the the audio for from the game for, you know, your background music. Oh, that works, though. Oh, but no, 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 no. Bring the flea back up. Bring the flea back up. There's nothing that can stop it. Oh, never mind. There's a Lotus. That will stop it. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Still, good harass, and there got rid of the red back, and should be able to get rid of the weaver, too. This flea, if it spots the weaver, oh, no, it won't. No, it's not far enough. It can't see it. If it had kept going, it would have spotted the weaver. Ah, it can keep going. It can spot the weaver. It can force the weaver back. Probably can't kill it. Not in time. But, actually, wait, will it? I don't know. If it moved forward, if it was just put on a move order, it might work, but no. No, the flea's coming to save it. The Weaver still pushed back, though, and that gives the Southwest a lot of room to expand, a lot of time to expand with. Now that the commander, from Wesley's jump commander, but that's just competing with RAR going for gunships and sending wasps over to the Northeast. But still, this is what Wesley needed to do last time, was quickly set up their economy over to the Southwest. Specifically the Southwest, because it's actually the same rough arrangement as the previous game. So with that, this actually isn't going to be as clear-cut a match. Northeast... They have economy, but now so does Southwest. And Southwest actually has something more economy as they've managed to build up this South section. Like, they're... Southwest is roughly even putting with even footing with Northeast, despite the fact that Northeast is already... Like, they've built up this Northeast section, because the Southwest also got the area on the reef. So, right now, I'd say that Southwest is slightly ahead. And they have a few bandits in a nice little inopportune position. It's impossible for the fleas to deal with them, so yeah. This is going to be pretty easy for them to get around. If the bandits have any room to come in on, that'll work. And also, harpies do not one-shot bandits. They one-shot glaives, not bandits. So, that works. Like, they exactly one-shot ban glaives. 200 damage. But, it's more a matter of when they're going to attack and where they're going to attack. Because, 
yeah, they can't beat Harp. They can't die one shot to Harpies, but Redbacks are still a threat. And the question is, what are they going to do for transition? Like, Redbacks are being built up at Power Stasis. So Power Stasis, I guess, is on the Riot duty. But then, are they going to go to Rogues? Because we saw Rogues last time, and they're really good. But it's not, not clear how it's going to work. On the other hand, it is clear that Southwest has just gone ham with building up economy. We've gotten the entire center built up. Their opponents have gotten nothing of that. And this has been scattered out. The fleet's coming in. By the way, how do we how are we doing for radar? Okay, good radar coverage for 400 and Westleaf. They've got all knowledge of this stuff going up front. And at the same time, what do their opponents have? Not much. they got radar coverage of the main base. They kind of know a few things going on, but like, in the bottom here... Mostly because of Weaver. Like, Weavers provide free radar. So actually, another thing, if you guys are watching and you're thinking, oh, where's the radar? If someone's playing spiders, every single one of their workers has radar. So they're just working with the workers. They're not bothering building static radar. But regardless of that, while this, this doesn't necessarily stop your opponents from building up a large army. Now, this army is going to not do much good. The Redbacks here, they're, they're fine. They're what they need. Like, that's what Pyrostasis needs to survive here. So that's going to work. But at the same time, Southwest is building their economy remarkably fast, and they've already dealt with the fact that their opponents have air, getting a few razors up. Actually, how many razors have been built up this far? Two of them! So yeah, the front lines are going to be difficult for the Harpies to get through. Because razors do a number against Harpies. Locusts can kind of speed past them and not care. Harpies, not so much. Of course, the only downside is Wesley hasn't really defended this Northwest expansion. In fact, all these metal, all these wind generators are so close here that they're going to cause a chain reaction if they start getting destroyed. The only saving grace right now is the Harpies are going back to try and get rid of the Bandits and Redback, because Redback actually was a threat. But being slowed, not so much. So, at this point, it's a bit of a tough call. Southwest does have the economic advantage, and they can use that effectively. And with the Vandals up, they can use that particularly effectively to get rid of the Harpies being built. But at the same time, they don't have a whole lot that's actually threatening Rar and Pyrostasis. Like, Rar and Pyrostasis, they built up their economy a bit slower, but... So what? They've gotten rid of the few forces that have come in that have been harassing. Army value is pretty much in a... Well, northeast advantage. Yeah, so... Barbar Pirate States is actually doing better on army. So... Now, it's not that I'm exhausted. It's that I have a thing to look at. I gotta start thinking like I have... I have stuff this afternoon. I was thinking that this would be done by about 2.30 or so. Or 2, 2.30. So it's ended about the time I thought it would for at least the first match, but it's... Yeah, I have to go afterwards. Anyway, like, as it is, I'm actually kind of late for what I needed to be at. But that's not really the point. I'm here for now. But yeah, they're... Okay, good they had the Razor there. Still, the problem is, of course, all these wind generators were very close to each other. Like, that's why you kind of want to separate them out. Z and X are the default controls when you're building a line of them. Oops, no, that's what I want. I want this. No. Like, Z and X, if you're holding... Oh, I have mine changed? What do I have mine set to? Okay, mine are set differently. I can't remember what I set them to. By default, Z and X do it. I just don't remember what... I changed mine, but I can't remember what I changed it to. Sorry about that. Actually, it might be also if you hold the button, but I might... No, mouse wheel doesn't do anything. Never mind! We'll talk about it later. Z and X default controls. Use that to keep your wind generator safe, because right now, it doesn't matter. Power Stasis is attacking the front. And destroying quite a lot of it, too. I mean, the Redback should be able to get rid of the Thugs, no problem. Ah, but the Outlaw coming in here, that's what they need. Get that Outlaw in there. Not sure if the Vandals are the best option, because I realize why they're there. They're there to stop any Harpies from getting through and dealing damage. But I don't know if it's going to matter. Still, though, Southwest is managing to build up pretty quick. Their army is still behind. Defense is ahead, army's behind. Their army's not really holding up well, either. But if they get rid of the Harpies, then it doesn't even matter. And the Harpies are basically walking, or flying to their deaths. One of them going down, two of them going down without dealing basically any damage. And on the front lines, the main problem is these Hermits. And the fact that the Vandals are getting in front of everything else, and they're going to die if they do that. But yeah, and get enough Rogues, get enough Bandits. Rogues at this point would be the choice I'd go for. Get a dozen Rogues. Get a dozen Rogues and you win. That's all it is for Wesley. If they get Rogues, they've got this. Or Redbacks. Or sorry, Recklesses. Recklesses work too. Recklesses would actually work better because it's a larger force. So the fact that it's a sp more spread fire would be a more effective option. Oof. 
That lotus. Getting rid of the tarantula. Nothing stopping it. Why is the tarantula not moving? I, okay, I mean, it trusts, it trusts the other units that, alongside it. And apparently that trust was well placed. But yeah, that was a little odd. At any rate, the more important thing is Wesley coming along here and pretty much setting up for a nice push. Rar's commander up front. Rar's commander only level 3, which is pretty low for Rar's command for Rar, honestly. They usually have upgraded the commander a lot more by now. And at the same time, there's 400 of the static defense trying to stop the hermits. That's not going to work. It'll it'll slow them down. But 400's commander is dead unless they retreat. At the same time, Rar's commander wisely retreating while also losing a bunch of their forces. And the tarantulas are going to probably justify themselves right now. There's tarantula and vandal coming in here to stop these harvests from doing anything. The army value advantage might be in favor of Pyrostasis and Rar, but so much, actually, what is not anymore, and it was, but a lot of it are these harpies. And these harpies, that's half of their army value is these harpies, which are doing nothing. So the numbers don't show it, or didn't until just now, but 400 and Wesley are way ahead in terms of the actual useful army. All they need to do is break through these defenses, get rid of the, the harpies that have been built up, and then once that's done, it's... I mean, there's not much that Rar and Pyrostasis have to help them. I mean, the Harpies are doing a fine job getting through the shields, but still, so much anti-air is in place that unless the Harpies break the entire army, which I kind of doubt they will for all the anti-air that's out here, I just... Yeah, this is a huge blow. This is potentially game-ending. Although the Tarantula going down is nice for Pyrostasis and Rar, that's not good enough. The economy has been in favor of Southwest for most of this game. The anti-air is the main thing Southwest has is destroying the gunships. This crab... Uh, sorry, the, the Western side is the only... Not so much the crab. The Western side as a whole is the only thing being held onto by Power Stasis and RAR in a way that's actually being meaningful as a way that's actually providing them some kind of in. And even that is being held off quite effectively by 400. So if that gets held off, if that crab is destroyed, it's going to be very difficult for any real defense to be properly put up. And honestly, these forces could just walk in here. Like, the forces on the eastern side could just walk in and be fine. Same time, though, Rar going for a... Going for the Hail Mary pass of a crow! Just figure, you know what? Screw it. I'm gonna build a crow. Because if it works, it'll work really well. If it doesn't work, they're kind of screwed. But if it works, yeah, not a bad idea. And the crab taking advantage of Weaver's little ter terraforming tower there. So the tower crab, generally a good idea. But it doesn't even matter. Second crab is coming in, but that first crab, not a whole lot of value is getting off. Then this, the second crab, as a result of moving, not even able to avoid that much damage. Not that it matters now, but yeah, this is actually kind of going in favor of Pyrostasis and Rar to an extent. But only to an extent, and that extent is kind of stopped once the crabs are destroyed. Because the thing is, the crabs don't have a whole lot. They're going up. Whoa, what the? Okay, that was neat. I didn't realize you could do that, but that was a neat little strategy. Just drop one of the dirt bags, because what happens is that the dirt bags, if they self-destruct or just die, they create a mound, and that forces the crabs to move, which gets rid of their armor, which then deals boatloads of damage. That was hell I never even thought of that. I mean, dirt bags, yeah, they move the ground. It never occurred to me. No, put them right next to the unit you want to dislodge, because in the case of crabs, when they move, armor's gone, and then force them that way. That is, that is cool. That is really cool. So yeah, clever play from Wesley winning that fight. I mean, if the fleas coming in here are causing problems, getting rid of some of the anti-air and actually getting rid of this metal, this geothermal plant, which is most of Southwest, actually, that's half of Southwest power, but it's not, not huge. <laughs> At the same time, whee! No, uh, uh, sorry, I just, you don't get to see the physics of the game get blown up that much, but sometimes you do. And sometimes it's just nice to see the fleas fly away. Because, I mean, this game is pretty cool strategically, and there's a lot of neat things you can do, and, and there's a lot of systems that interact in ways that allow for clever thinking on so many different levels to win the day. But there's also just the fact that the physics engine provides some really hilarious unit flying, and that's just, that's just a treat to see sometimes. Anyway, with the crow up, this... Well, again, like I said, it's the Hail Mary pass there. It's the one thing. If the crow does it, it does it. But if the crow doesn't do it, that is literally their entire army value. 4800 army value, 
4,500 of it is that crow. So, if that dies, it's game over. And even if it doesn't die, it might still be game over because there's nothing else really defending. Like, crab's being built up, but there's such a huge army coming in besides that. It almost doesn't matter. The chainsaw is up, so the crow essentially can't even push forward in the main base as it should. I'm sure they'd want it to. Like, Rar's not really having a good day here. Although the commander is still alive, the commander's level 5. It's. What does it have on it? Disruptor Bomb and Beam Laser. So it's mostly just been upgraded to get the extra HP. At the same time, though, Pyrostasis, they're going to get that crab up, but is it going to be much? Hard to say. The main problem here is the crow is coming in on the recluses, and the recluses have to get out of there. Like, that crow might still be worth it. Yeah, it's most of the army value, but is it going to die before it deals enough damage to make up for itself? And the answer is unclear. I mean, it's able to do a lot here, but the crab might be punishing the vandals just for existing. Are there dirtbags available? We're going to see another dirtbag jump. No, not yet. And honestly, it may not matter. Southwest is still way ahead economically, thanks to the reclaim. They don't quite, unfortunately, have enough production capacity to make that reclaim worthwhile yet. But it's, it's not bad. At the same time, though, smart play from Wesley. Go along where your opponents aren't. I mean, Rar's commander's there, yes, but everything else is not there. So go where their opponents aren't. Deal with that stuff. Unfortunately, because Rar's commander has the disruption bomb, the shields don't do much. They don't last long. And that is forcing everything back. Some static defenses have been killed, but that's about it. And honestly, that was a huge blow. I still think that was a smart move in theory, but I... Yeah, that didn't quite work in practice. At the same time, though, this the thinking is still good. And the thinking being applied is still avoid where the crow is. Avoid where the crabs are. And that's still leading to a lot of damage in the south northeast economy. So it may not be directly destroying everything that northeast has built up, because that's difficult to do. But it's still setting Southwest up so that they can set up an army that can actually win. Because right now, Northeast does have an army advantage. It's the Crow and both Crabs, but that's still a lot of damage. A Crow and two Crabs. I mean, that's forcing a ton of AA. That's... And the Crabs are difficult to deal with without Skirmishers. So, really, it's actually kind of hard. This is... This is not a bad position Northeast has put themselves in. Yes, they're losing a lot of economy. Their backline is gradually being destroyed by bandits... But it's still, like, there's a there's a window here where it's actually going to be perfectly viable to play the way they are. And yeah, they're losing their economy, they're taking some damage, but they're doing a lot of damage in the process, and the amount of money their opponents have to invest in what they need to do to get rid of the crow and get rid of the crab is huge. Now, granted, if the crow dies in enemy territory, then it's over. Like, the amount of re that's 1,800 metal that's available for reclaim if that happens. And that looks pretty likely right about now. Maybe some one of these hits. Actually, what, really? St oh, right. Vandals deal hardly any damage, don't they? What? No, 70 damage a shot. Why is this not... Ah, well. Wisely, the crow's going over water. Can't be easily hit over there, and if it dies, then there's not much reclaim potential. But at the same time, one of the crabs has gone down. Another crab about to die to the stingers. Third crab in the back, not able to really do much effectively. And at the same time, there's Wesley coming in with more forces. I mean, the back line was damaged, but it's been rebuilt. However, northeast, they don't have much in the way of the front line. Again, they pretty much only have the one big heavy option. And while I don't think there's enough rogues to deal with big heavy options right now, it's still it's still an option. It's still an option that's kind of not great for northeast. Southwest just with just to get more caretakers. Get more caretakers or more convicts or something and start building up. Do exactly what you're doing. That's good. Good. Do that. Or get a gunship plan. That works too. Actually, that might work better, in fact. If they do that, then they can get, like, Harpies and Locusts. Possibly Revenants. Maybe a Crow of their own, actually. They got 200, or got 150, 120 metal per second. I'm exaggerating too much here. 120 metal per second. They could get a Crow in, like... Uh, well, okay, it still would take a while. They are doing it, though! That's exactly what they're doing! I mean, it's, let's say, 150 metal. 400... Okay, it's a minute. It's a minute. Just let the game do it for me. 4,500 on a crow. Yeah, and they have the anti-air. They're not fighting against anti-air. They can just waltz the crow right in and wipe out everything. So this is actually really smart, because their opponents don't know they have gunships. Now, they always knew that their opponents had gunships, and that's how it worked. That's how the counter was able to happen. But they don't know their opponents have gunships. Sorry, the opponents don't know... They, Rar and Pyrosis don't know that Wesleyan 400 have gunships, and the stream is on a two-minute delay, so they won't until after it's built. 
So, they don't have any anti-air built up. Well, on the other hand, the crow that was built by 400 Empire, or by RAR, RAR can't do anything with it because there's so much anti-air on the map. Even with the Infernos coming in and damaging stuff, it's not enough to get rid of their, their anti-air. At the same time, we have Wesley going in for a distraction, so I'm guessing what's going to happen is Wesley's going to go along the north side, and the crow is going to be sent along here. Like, sent along this... Oops, sent along this path. But we'll see what happens. It might actually go kind of over here. I kind of expected to go over here and hit this hell of factors here first. And then work from there. But I don't know. We'll find out in seven seconds. Because that crow is being built very efficiently. Same time, though, there's a lot of grizzlies to deal with. I guess, yeah, here would kind of make sense. Get rid of the grizzlies. Or maybe not. No, grizzlies are risky. I don't know if that's worth it. I really kind of wish we'd see more rogues. I understand why we, why we see the crow. I, see, I wish we'd see more rogues. No, the crow's going around the side. Okay, so it is going along the other side. That is kind of the plan. Oh, and nicely done with the ravens going along the back line. Getting rid of the fusion plant. Not, not able to get rid of the crow much. They could go for it. I mean, they could actually kill it. But not doing that. And also no air pads up, which is a bit of a shame. I would like to see an air pad. That would mean we'd get, get these ravens refueled, rearmed very quickly. But it may not matter. The crow coming in here has has been spotted. Oops. Has the crow been spotted? I don't know. Let's see. Let's find out. Oh, it has been spotted now. Yeah. They know. They definitely know. And this crow should be able to tear apart most everything. I mean, now, it's kind of peeling because the front line is still heavily under fire. Like, it's still heavily pressured for northeast. But now their back line has a crow in an area that's basically undefended. Not sure where the crow is planning on going, though. I guess it's trying to get into the main base to try to build up a bit. But archers were already being built. Oh, is this going to be effective? That grizzly is the main problem, though. The grizzly, every time it fires, it's like a tenth of the HP of the crow is gone on top of all the archers being built up. Now, I'll grant that the frontline pressure is also going to be effective, and the rogues are being built up, but it's not quite enough. And the ravens are being used... Come on, use the ravens to get rid of the crow! Why are the ravens not getting rid of this crow? At the very least, the crow... Get rid of the spider factory? Get rid of the missile silo? Okay, good. Got rid of the spider... Spider factory. Didn't get rid of the missile silo, mind you. And now is dead. Yeah, Anna Tarar, it was a bit weird to build that crow, but they've certainly kept it alive a hell of a lot longer than our opponents did. And again, I don't know why, because ravens can kill the crow. Like, there's more than enough... There's more than enough damage on the ravens to kill off Rar's crow. But we don't see the ravens going back and getting rid of it. I really don't know why. Like, this is actually honestly frustrating for me to watch, because the ravens aren't killing the crow, and they really could be. And at this point, Southwest still has the massive economic advantage. They still have a position they can work from to do pretty much whatever the heck they want. And they're building rogues with it, and I agree with that decision. I just wish they'd remember that gunships are vulnerable to... They're vulnerable to air. They're vulnerable to ravens. Ravens can bomb gunships. It's weird and slightly counterintuitive, but it's a thing. Thankfully, though, they're not stopping at the crow. They did also get a dozen locusts. And that looks like it'll be the way they actually try to win this match. I mean, the archers are up front. They're, they're not anywhere near the locust. They're going to allow the locust to get rid of all this economy in the back lines. Probably not going to get rid of any of the factories, but they're going to get rid of the economy. They're going to get rid of some of the overdrive potential, some, some of the pylons being used to set that up. So that's something. But, yeah, I don't know. At least the ravens aren't being wasted, though. They're getting rid of some of the crabs. But please build an air pad. Like... Why don't you build an air pad? It'd be so much more efficient. The game would be over by now if they'd build an air pad. Just the amount of times the Ravens would have... They would have attacked like four or five times by now. Would have gotten rid of Missile Silo. Would have gotten rid of some of the factories. Would have gotten rid of... And the Razor, razor would have been up in time. Like, air pads are really useful because speed matters. Efficiency matters when you're doing this stuff. Ah, and the Geothermal plant's gone in the cost of a lot of the Locusts. But yeah, efficiency matters. Oh, never mind. No, they're just going around the side. So I don't know why they aren't building an air pad. I just really wish they would. There we go! And they are! My wish has come true! They are building air pads. Perfect. That should turn things around completely. Like, at this point, there's only the two factories up here. The gunship plant and the amphibot. 
And with the air pads coming up, those ravens can just get rid of everything. And while there are razors on the map, and actually quite a few of them belonging to... Actually, okay, there's a lot of anti-air. That is a lot of anti-air. I'm not sure the initiative hasn't been lost for Southwest, but they do have the economic advantage, though it may not even matter. They might just be able to push with this and be done with it. Okay. At any rate, air pads up. Bombers can do their thing more often if they could do their thing at all. But now the anti-air investment, that might might be okay. Army value is dead even, mind you, so it's hard to say. If the Grizzlies die, then it'll be worth it, and the Grizzlies might die? I mean, there's a lot of rogues. There's a lot of rogues. 28 rogues. There's a lot of rogues here. And a lot of ravens, too, and they kind of don't care. It's a suicide mission for the most part, but hey. They're doing their job. They get rid of the Grizzlies. That's worth it, and they got rid of the Grizzlies. Totally worth it. Lost almost all the Ravens in the process, but that's two Grizzlies dead. If they can get the reclaim, this will be a f this will be Southwest taking it. The only downside, of course, is this is exactly what's worried about in this map. This this Central River tends to get very porky, as we're seeing right now. And now, granted, there are enough rogues to break through it, but because of the hill right here, it gets it's very easy to set it up as this constant back and forth reclaim killing field that just cannot easily be broken. That being said, though, just the fact that it's all anti-air and no anti-ground means the rogues can pretty much waltz in here, tear apart the cobras, or threshers, rather, and then that'll leave the ravens room to get in, and, well, some room to get in. And that should do the trick. Don't forget, also, there are still spiders, so they can go up the up this hill, take care of everything up here. Again, no anti-ground defenses here. Just anti-air. And Raj Commander's not in a great spot. And this crow can be bombed. Although, at the same time, there's so much anti-air, it may not even matter. Rar does not lose their commander. One more rocket would have done it, but nope. Rogue's going for the crow instead. And good! The Raven's being used to take care of the crow. That's exactly what I wanted to see. That's exactly what I see. And that will be the death of that crow. Finally! Rar's crow is gone. Got rid of quite a few of the rogues in the process, but still, that gets rid of the crow. That gets rid of pretty much all the heavy units. That was where most of the army value was coming from. Now we have the, uh, those... Two crabs, sorry, two grizzlies and crow going from 13,000 army, or 12,000 army rather, to 2,000 army. There's not much left for Pyrostasis and Rar. This should be Westling 400's game. Bit of a longer game than I'm sure they might have expected, but this is going to be it. The last push will win it. Infernos are in range as well, getting rid of the missile silo, getting rid of the caretakers that are helping that out, getting rid of the behemoth, sorry, the service. Behemoth is a. Is it, wait. Was that renamed? I don't even remember anymore. Yes, it was been it was renamed. It was called Behemoth before. That's why I was mistaken. I never build units. I never build big, big artillery units like that. I don't play FFA. So, yeah, I forget the names of those ones. At any rate, there's the big spider push up the hill. Kind of what I expected. So that at some point they can push the spiders up, no anti-ground defenses, and that should be it. Northeast is likely to hold on as long as they can because this is a tournament. This is the last match. The last round in the grand finals, so if they don't then if they don't take it, then they're they're done. I mean they're done anyway. But if they give up, they've given up in the finals. That's probably not something they want to necessarily do. See if they can find any way back into this. Not sure what options they have. They already went for the Hail Mary Pass of the Crow, and that actually worked really well. Surprisingly, it held them it had, had them hold on for a long time, but it didn't do enough damage to the economy to make Southwest unable to just build up their own massive army and then push back. Which is exactly what they've just done. I mean, all the recklesses and rogues just getting rid of grizzlies. And fleas, too. I mean, fleas are not a bad option against grizzlies. They're not a great option if there's any support at all, like the Lotus. But, eh, they do damage, and they don't really get killed by the grizzly effectively. So, yeah, this actually works really well. And the Nimbus is over on the south side, taking care of all the stuff that we're built, building up for the majority of the game. And then everything on the northern side being taken care of by the sheer mass of recluses and fleas. I'm like, fleas, just getting rid of all the anti here. I almost want to see some... I get the ravens here. Just get the ravens in here. Open up the open up the razors. So the fleas kill them faster. There you go. Perfect. That's exactly what I need to do. Make them open up so they die. That's something I've noticed about Wesleyan 400 this match. I don't know if that was intentional, but probably was. The way that the ravens did not go in a straightforward path to the target. 
is that it seems like they've been doing a lot of stuff to try to force their opponents to not be able to use their tools. Like, the dirtbag trick was hilarious. That was amazing. I didn't realize you could do that. And then now, something I didn't know you could do with the razors and opening them up, but still, very good thing on their part is to realize, like, hey, your opponent's taking advantage of some armor property of something. Find a way to nullify that. That was very clever. I mean, okay. I mean, I mentioned I wasn't sure I'll only be able to stay, and we're done now, so it doesn't matter. But, man, that was a great match to watch. I'm really glad I got to see it. Metal use- 127,000?! <laughs> wow, I don't usually see six-digit metal usage over time, but there you go. They had three-digit metal income for the majority of the game, so I guess that makes sense. Anyway, that is it. So, thank you all for watching. Thank you, everyone, for playing. And congratulations to Fortnite and Wesley for taking that match. Good job, Pyrostasis Roar, as well, for getting second. And to Astran and Kingstad for taking third place. But that is going to be it for me to tonight. So, again, thank you all for watching. And have a good night, everyone. Also, actually, one last thing. Bit of self-promotion. But if you happen to have any questions you wanted to ask me, like burning questions, really wanted to know... I've got a YouTube video basically collecting questions for a, like, thousand sub Q&A thing. So, if you have any burning questions, just go to that video. It's the current video on my channel is, like, the, as the four new visitors video. It's the Q&A announcement. So, go there, post something in the comments if you have any questions, and I'll answer them next Saturday. Anyway, until then, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. Thank you, Shaman, for organizing. Thanks, everyone, for playing. And until next time, have a good night, everyone.